Hi, just a quick word here. We've been looking at speciation on the last slides and it requires reproductive isolation, right? That means members in a population can't mix their genes with other members of the same species for one of a number of different reasons, right? And here we see on the AP exam, the, the test makers um, uh, say that this is a common mistake to differentiate the types of reproductive isolation. Now, you don't have to memorize all these different ones here. Um, you should be able to understand them though. And then on the IB higher level list, they um, talk about three, differentiating between three ones that are due to geography, ones that are due to time factors, ones that are due to behavioral factors, all right? So um, for instance, if um, a certain type of insect um, mates during a particular season and another type, uh, another group of that same species mates in a different season, that would keep their genes from mixing and that would be a temporal time, temporal isolating mechanism. If, for instance, among birds, we have um, this kind of bird does, birds characteristically do like mating dances, they're called, to attract mates. Well, this kind of bird, a blackbird, does this kind of mating dance, and that kind of bird, a cardinal, does a different kind of mating dance. It's those different mating dances that are behaviorally, behaviorally separating blackbirds and cardinals. And then the geography one is simple. If they can't bump into each other, they can't mate. So some type of geography separating them. So you have the um, uh, largemouth bass in a lake in Montana and largemouth bass in a lake in Florida. They're obviously geographically isolated. The next thing that needs to happen to make, um, to make these groups evolve into different species eventually is that they have to have different niches. A niche, by definition, is all of the interactions of an organism, or excuse me, of a population of organisms with its environment. So it's not like a location. The correct word for the location where a population lives is its habitat. That's part of its niche. But it also um, is in what season are they active? Are they active during the day or the night, the summer, the winter, the fall? Um, where do they get their food? Where do they get their water? Where do they get their oxygen? What kind of things do they eat? What kind of things eat them? It's all about how a group of organisms kind of fits in with their environment. So um, here we have the two table setters. Remember we had table setters for the natural selection process, great reproductive potential, variation, finite resources, right? Here we have the table setters for the evolution of two or more different species from a common ancestor, right? But what's actually gonna cause the evolution is the evolution causers, which we equated to the five fingers of evolution from our um, Mr. Anderson videos, right? Um, so it's natural selection, maybe genetic drift, maybe some migration, maybe some mutation, or a combination of those, right? That is what causes speciation. These two things are required to set the stage for it, right? If these two groups who used to be part of the same species, common ancestor, right? If they were never separated from each other, then they would never become different. So now here back to this um, uh, isolating mechanisms and the connection between a um, adjective that goes with speciation and another one, which is gonna be sympatric, right? Uh, these words are part of the story for you to differentiate um, on the AP and IB level. So what allo means is other, we had that prefix already. It is the other site on an enzyme that a thing might stick to and inhibit that enzyme. Not the active site, but an other site. Allo means other. Patrick, patriot, that means country. So this word, word literally means other country, and what it refers to is that isolating mechanism, which is geography. Geographic isolation sets the stage for allopatric speciation. If these two groups somehow become separated, right? Geographically, 
their members can't bump into each other, then they can evolve in their own separate ways. So here they are all occupying the same kind of territory at one point in time, and at a later point in time, maybe due to migration. Maybe some of these just take up and move to a different location, but now being in different locations, these can't mate with those. Their gene pools gradually become more and more different. Why? Five fingers, right? One of five different reasons or a combination of them. And eventually they're so different, they can't mate and produce fertile offspring. They are different species by definition. However, they don't have to separate physically for this to happen. To be isolated, they can still be living in the same basic area and still potentially bump into each other, but all these other things now might isolate them. All the rest of this list will set the stage for sympatric speciation because they're in the same country, literally, sympatric. They're in the same area. They're not physically isolated, geographically not physically isolated. Something else is isolating them. So that's kind of how to break that down. So here's another little aspect that's almost a, a for sure kind of question. So when Darwin talked about evolution, he, he thought for the most part it always occurred very gradually. It takes a long time. That's why you can't see it happening right before your eyes unless you know where to look, like we've said before. So this graph represents that gradualism model. And it is a graph. If you notice, it's got an x-axis and a y-axis. The y-axis is time. Often time is on the x-axis. But in these kind of diagrams, which are called cladograms, um, we'll get to those later, uh, time is usually represented as, um, you know, uh, moving on as you go up in the graph like it shows here. Okay. So this is, in the past, you had this kind of species and as time went by, it diverged into these two, right? We had reproductive isolation, we had uh, five fingers, we had different niches, and these both evolved to different niches, and there they are today. Well, what this shows is that this split from a common ancestor took a lot of time. It took a lot of time to get from this kind, oops, get out of the way, to that kind and to that kind. But sometimes the fossil record shows us that that can happen relatively quickly. So here we start with the same species, and for a long time, it stays the same. Gradualism, right? And then relatively recently, how's that reflected in this diagram? This goes uh, horizontally. That means not much time went by before this kind of thing evolved into that kind of thing relatively rapidly. What's relatively mean? Maybe thousands or tens of thousands of years, as opposed to millions or hundreds of millions. So this is all relative. This isn't in five days, right? But then at another point in time, some members of this same common ancestral group, right, made another quick divergence. And then in this particular diagram, it shows that this ancestral group still exists today um, as it was in the past. So here we have the idea that things cannot change for a good long time. Gradualism, there is an equilibrium. But every now and then, that equilibrium is punctuated by rapid periods of change. And that change is going to be measured in speciation rate. How fast are new species evolving? So... In the punctuated equilibrium model again, 
the fossil record shows us that there have been periods where speciation occurred quite rapidly quite rapidly and that usually those rapid speciation periods were preceded by a period where lots of things went extinct it's like lots of people move out of the neighborhood that sets the stage for the neighborhood to change more people move into the neighborhood and they're different to make a kind of analogy vacating those niches when things become extinct set the stage for other organisms to evolve to fill those niches and that can happen fairly rapidly with great reproductive potential da 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 da, da. most of the time again it's the natural selection process that's creating this divergence sometimes it can be different things but often it's the natural selection process So here, just one connection with the graph I wanted to make before we close the door on this. And um, let's look over here at the one you're most familiar with. This is when the dinosaurs became extinct, about 63 million years ago, right? Here's the present. There's 100 million years ago. It's about 63. What this graph shows, if you can see, we got three graphs kind of superimposed on each other, is extinctions. What happened 63 million years ago? A whole lot of things became extinct, a spike in the extinction line right and then this line represents originations right that means new species coming about how did the spike in new species come about relate to the spike in extinctions it followed it by just a little bit right this spike in extinctions opened up niches and set the stage for rapid speciation and we have seen that five different times in the fossil record in the history of life on Earth since about 600 million years ago or so, right? So if we look at the green one, that's the biggest. That's called the Permian extinction. We'll mention that in a minute, maybe. But you see this extinction is when um, fully 95% of organisms that existed in the ocean went extinct then. Um, both of these extinction events coincided with meteorite um, impacts or huge volcanic eruptions, mass volcanic eruptions. In other words, both of these mass extinctions had the stage set for them by a drastic, very quick change in selection pressures. And lots of things couldn't evolve fast enough to be able to survive those change in selection pressures. But what that set the stage for again is rapid speciation. Now, unfortunately, officially because they have official numbers that uh, they use to call these official mass extinctions officially we are now in the sixth mass extinction there have been enough species go extinct in a short enough period of time to where we are officially in another mass extinction one and this is the only one that we humans have been around for and unfortunately we can trace a fair number of the extinctions to our own human activities